In high school, I remember seeing a smart blind move for the first time. And I was like, hey, this could be a job. Like I could wire up smart homes. And then I did one week work experience as an electrician and was like, nah, climbing through roofs like ain't for me. Thankfully, these smart blinds don't require electrical work. And by rocking the latest in smart home technology, you simply scan a QR code to pair. So cool, man. If I'm being honest, the process hasn't been flawless. Oh no, I just realized something because I made a lot of mistakes that you can learn from, and the manufacturer that sent me these yeah, blinds for review also made a mistake. Plus, one has become damaged in a way that may not have happened if I was pulling the cord by hand. But I can tell you this, after seven months of use, I already want more. That's much better. Laziness. It's the first thing that comes to mind, right, with smart blinds. Like, unless you're elderly or someone with fine motor skills, just pull the cord. But then I thought, why did I install an add-on motor that would pull the cord of my blind a few years ago? It's because the window was behind my desk and reaching over without bumping things was a bit difficult. Maybe you have raised ceilings with those little windows that you can't reach the blinds on, or like the final blind we'll install today, automation having the blind go up and down when you're not home can be really useful. Oh, and if you're wondering about that motor that I installed a few years ago, which you can tell because it went all yellow, it was about hundred bucks and eventually it stopped working because the constant tension on the cord stretched it and then the gears just started slipping. And when I tried to move it, the mount was brittle and broke. So it's time for a custom made solution. Now, Smartwings have sponsored today's video in the way of sending these blinds. There was no cash payment and they don't get to review this video before it goes live. But since these were custom made for my windows, I will be keeping them. Oh, that looks so nice. To install my previous blinds, I was the one that had to cut them to length. I cut these with an angle grinder. Kind of straight. <laughs> you can see the wobbles. It's like, if there's an imperfection, it's every, every part of the radius has the imperfection. Oh, okay. You go for it. Is that me? It is me. No, oh, that was easy. So it comes pre-programmed. Yeah, there we go. That's a bit cleaner looking. But when I installed the Valance, Jeez. I could hear the blind rubbing. See, in the box of supplies, there were a bunch of manuals. One was for installation. Now I'm ready to get to work. And in that, it stated to specifically install the Valance 10 centimeters from the back of the bracket. So during the installation, I measured out and mounted two 10 centimeters, which resulted in the valance rubbing on the fabric, which may wear out the blind over time. So I had to move it out further than what the instructions said. There's just a battery rolling around inside. Just a little Duracell, just <laughs> spinning. It's just like, Wah! So you might be wondering, how does the motor work? Well, the bracket mount holds one end in place. And if I manually press its button, it starts rotating the motor from inside the tube. Now this will rotate for the programmed distance of the height of the blind. And so the motor, along with the batteries, slide inside the core of the blind with the antennas sticking out, which provide the latest in smart home technology. Oh, I have to, right, I have to leave for, for dinner in like a minute. Hold the button for six seconds until it flashes red. Yep, now it's blinking red. Now I need to scan the QR code. I believe it's on the back of the blind. Yep. I literally click tap to set up. Google Home, installed. I have a Google Home. That's literally right next to this device. Now it's searching for the Matter device. We've got the Matter icon. Generating Matter credentials. Checking network connectivity. Device connected. Where is the device? Guest bedroom. Guest bed, blackout blind. Mate, this is ridiculous. This is so good. I've waited years for matter to finally be a thing. And this is, this is insane. Done. Open. The alarm went off at 4.30. It's now 4.33. The blind's going up. That is how simple it is. Now you might be thinking, Cam, what's the go with matter? Why is this thing so special? Well, traditionally, a smart home device required you to download an app from the manufacturer, log into an account, and then pair that to your smart home assistant. That would then send signals through the internet to the device, and then you could turn it on and off. The big problem with that is if the internet went down, the device usually stops working. And if the company went under, then it's most likely e-waste. 
Matter is the future. And this is because Google, Apple, Samsung with SmartThings, and Amazon with Alexa have come together to agree on a new standard which means you just need to scan a QR code on the device and it will automatically configure to your Matter controller. Now, Matter controllers are typically current gen smart home hubs. I have Nest Wi-Fi, which is on Google's list of supported devices. But since these seven smart blinds are using Matter over Thread, they have a Thread radio to talk to a smart PowerPoint or a smart light, and then back to the Matter controller. They can connect directly, you don't need to have other devices, but they help extend and improve reliability on your matter over thread mesh network. So this means that my Wi-Fi router is kind of a smart home server. So instead of the blind talking to a server on the internet and then telling my Google Assistant Hub what is happening, it will just talk directly to this. So if the internet goes down, I can still open and close my smart blinds or turn a light on and off as long as they're all talking through a matter protocol. But that's in theory. We'll talk about how well this works after a few months of use. I feel it's quite obvious that I enjoy having physical buttons that can change different things in the desk. Like I went to a lot of effort to have the lights change from buttons. And so I really appreciate just a simple remote that can control the blinds, especially if someone house sits. I can say six and seven will do the blinds in the guest bedroom. They don't have to learn the voice commands. I also want to point out a genius move, and that's putting a QR code to the manuals on the remote. So like, good job, SmartWings, because that's how I learned that the 15 channels that this remote can control doesn't just mean 15 smart blinds. You can group multiple blinds to the single channel. So I could put all of these sheer blinds up in the house at one time to then open up the windows to run the aircon. Of course, with a smart assistant, I could make a sequence where I say move blinds for air conditioner and they all move to a certain percentage on top of simply moving the blinds to a specific percentage in my Google Home app. And the main benefit over the remote would be programming to open or close at a certain time. The only issue with this automation is if the blackout blinds start to close at night time, but I haven't turned off the air con and closed the windows, then they just get sucked into the fly screen, which is a classic Aussie evaporative cool up issue. I'd say the worst place for automation would be a bathroom, <laughs> but the best place would be outside. Damn, that feels cool. Unfortunately, there was a mistake with my order. See, these are custom made to order smart blinds. So for my style, I chose roller blinds. I entered in my measurements of my windows in inches. There's no option to use centimeters, which would be nice. And then I had to choose a material, but I noticed you could actually order fabric swatches. Unlike off the shelf tech, we can match to our existing home. And my wife was stoked because with the options available, we got a perfect match to our sheer blinds and a very close color and texture match to the blockouts in our living room. But for outside, I wanted a fabric that would match above the windows, but also have a light color to reflect heat. And what I received was called gray. What I ordered was called white gray. I can understand the mix up. So whilst replacement material is on the way, we need to sort out power. Solar panel and the cable in the end is USB-C. That is so cool. Oh no, I just realized something. That we got them done so that the motor can go on the right hand side. The right hand side window is the window that opens. As so you put a solar panel on it, then it's gonna like oh, no. yank it out. <laughs> yeah, I stuffed up. See, these brackets have an R for the motor to mount to the right hand side. Thankfully, they sent me replacement sets so I don't yank out the solar panel's cable when I open the window. I just had to remove the motor, put a broomstick through the tube to knock out the end plug, and then swap the sides. Now I held off installing the blinds in the studio until I had the replacement brackets, but after I mounted them, and checked what channels they'll pre-programmed to. These are two and three. I realized. That's gone the wrong way. Press P for program, hold up and down, jogs. Dude, that was actually the easiest one to switch. Since the motor is on the opposite side, I had to set for them to go the opposite direction for up and down. That's so good. I could then easily fine tune the lower limit of each blind as well as the upper limits, so it doesn't go too high and let light in. And with six indoor blinds in total, I was quite familiar with the matter pairing sequence. 
So cool, man. Some of them it just says it can't find device. Doesn't make sense. For some reason, if I kept the blind moving during the pairing sequence, it worked. Yes, now we're on. Open the studio blackout blind. Sorry, it looks like the blackout blind isn't available right now. I'm, um, I'm currently trying to get set up for this shot and I'm telling it to open the blackout blind with Google, nothing's happening. I'm gonna try to use the remote. Okay, it works with the remote. Yeah, so they're not flat, it's just they're not talking to Google. Weird. Mate, I've been pulling my hair out, trying to figure out is it the smart blinds at fault or the matcha controller that's at fault? Because at first, they'll drop in like flies. Like every few weeks, every smart blind will just pretty much drop off, but like randomly at different days. And I'll then try and reconnect them and repair them and it'll just drop off again. After a few months though, the notifications stopped popping up. They stayed online. Nothing changes with the firmware on those, but the controller gets more updates. After looking online, I found many complaints about non-smart wing devices and Google hubs. One person solved their issue by connecting their blinds to the smart wings hub, which then talks to the internet back to the Google hub to then have Google control the blinds. At the moment, only one or two blinds drop off each month and I simply turn them off and on again and they reconnect. It's also worth noting that I have other devices from other manufacturers that also drop offline into our power cycle them. So it kind of keeps pointing back to my Google network. Hey, it's uh, me again, another mistake, another day. I overlapped panels in the studio so you wouldn't see them on camera and they were just thin enough to fit behind the sliding window. So I was pretty proud of this, but then I realized some of the cells were small enough to be blocked so it wasn't charging one of the blinds at all. Since heat damages solar panels, I opted for fishing line to remove the adhesive. And when I cut new double-sided tape, I ensured it didn't cover any of the cells. It's gonna be visible in videos though, which is kind of annoying. The good news is that although this window barely gets direct sunlight, the panel picked up enough reflected light to keep the built-in battery charged even throughout winter. You could be asking yourself the question, what if I saved 50 US dollars per 3.4 watt 5 volt USB-C solar panel and instead just use the internal batteries? Like you could plug them into a wall charger or just charge up each battery with a power bank every few months. Like how long would they last? Well, that question is like a, how long is a piece of string? Because depending on how wide your blind is and what material you chose would depend how much strain is on the motor. The length of each blind will determine how long it needs to run for to go fully up and down, plus how often you open and close your blinds. And there's also three speeds that each motor can run at. This is low speed. This is medium speed. And this is high speed, which presumably would use more power. So on screen, I'm gonna put some maths of the black hat blind that's been in this room running at medium speed, as well as the shear blind for this room running at low speed. The easiest option, just whack some solar panels on a window. It's also the easiest for outside. It took many months and a few follow-up emails for the replacement material to ship. Do not cut the antenna. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea, I'd say. There seems to have been confusion in their system as I was dealing through a marketing rep and wasn't a regular customer from their website. Either way, once the material arrived, I thought it would be a simple swap. But no matter how hard I pressed, the non-motor end wouldn't slot into its mount. A millimetre shorter. Yeah, it turns out the original end cap was a little wider than on the replacement blind, so I also had to swap them. No USB-C plug on the outdoor blind solar panel. Instead, we have a more suitable water resistant seal. It did come with a wall plug, but this one has no seal, so it's presumably for undercover use only. And the brackets for the wall are spring-loaded clips, similar to the Volance. So I could screw these into some studs, and then my wife and I could lift it up onto the wall and clip it in place. Oh, I've got mine to hold. There we go. How nice is that? That's fresh as. The big question is, do I think these are worth the money? Or are there cheaper alternatives that you're better off buying? If I was to nitpick, the Valance cuts aren't 90 degrees, and one blind in our spare room has shuffled to the right and damaged the edge. 
If I was pulling the cord by hand, I would have noticed this. Smartwing said to avoid having the base rest or collide with anything on the windowsill, as this can cause it to skew across the roll. And from my limited knowledge of blinds, I know to put some tape on the roll to make it walk a certain direction. And it seems in factory they did this to shift it from the left, but once it's mounted on my window, it actually just didn't need it. Either way, with a three year warranty on motors and blinds, they're shipping me replacement material, as it shouldn't have happened. It definitely doesn't feel like they're skimping on details. They included gloves, a spirit bubble level, even put a solid metal rod in the base of the blind to reduce it swinging in the wind. And I can even get that metal wrapped in fabric. So if the wind blows it into the window frame, it doesn't make a loud ting. Alternatively, you could just try and find a motor that fits inside your existing blind. This would be the most sustainable and cost-effective option. You would just have to be careful to match the diameter and aluminium profile of the tube inside your blind. You also need to figure out if they need a remote to program the upper and lower limits, or if maybe they have an app, plus there's other communication standards. Smartwing sell their motors separately for Z-Wave, Zigbee, and Matter protocols, and you can pick up their solar panels if you can't find 5 volt USB-C elsewhere. Something that stood out to me though, is that they've got a wall mount switch that you can get custom laser engraved with labels for your room. So that's a really cool touch they offer that I haven't seen elsewhere. Now being a tech enthusiast, my knowledge of pricing blinds is very limited. So here in the study, we had these dual roller blinds made for 795 Australian dollars by a local business. And that includes a wrapped valance and matching material. They also measured and installed the blinds. Comparing the Smart Wings blinds to that of the study, you'll be getting a dual roller blind with plain metal valance. However, we did get the fabric wrapped base bar to match the styling of the others. That's 920 Australian dollars. Now, compared to the study, there's $125 more to get a baseline motor that works just with a remote. But what we have here is a matter of a thread motor. So that was an extra $297 Australian upgrade for two motors. Plus we've got two solar panels, which are $156 upgrade and a 15 channel remote, which you need for programming the upper and lower limits coming in at 40 Australian dollars, totaling 1,414 Australian dollars for this dual roller blind setup, bringing it to about $600 more per window than having someone locally make and install a dumb blind versus having someone make and ship from China a smart blind that I have to install. That's a lot of money. Like when we moved in, we couldn't afford to get custom blinds made. So I just cut down the cheapest off the shelf option. As I said, I cut these with an angle grinder. Personally, I wouldn't have spent the money to upgrade our bedroom blinds to smart blinds. They just simply don't get enough use to warrant the automation and having the evaporative cooler where the blind goes down and gets sucked into the fly screen is really annoying. I would, however, happily purchase more outdoor blinds like the one in the master bedroom behind me. Being able to have this up at the start of the day to let in sunlight and then automatically lower in the afternoon when the sun reaches this side of the house has greatly reduced the temperature of this room. The blind itself adds benefit, but the motorized automation of that blind maximizes the benefit. And I just put them for like the entire afternoon sun side of the house. Now, I can only speak about my experience, but smart wings, from my mistakes and theirs have been very responsive and had solutions and a lot of help for every question that I've had. So if you wanna check out their website, I'll link it in the description below so you can check out all of their blinds. I'm gonna get back to the studio so I can work on the next piece of custom tech going into the desk. Thank you for watching the whole video. Bye.